Hey, it's New Whiskey Wednesday here at The Rookie, and we're going to go ahead and discuss a Washington distillery, one I've mentioned before, but today is a special bottle. We're talking Woodenville Straight Bourbon Whiskey. This is a private barrel pick, the very first barrel pick from the Washington Bourbon Hunters Group. This is called First Sighting. Stay tuned. Hey, good afternoon. This is New Whiskey Wednesday. You are tuned in to Scott, that's me. This is the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast, YouTube's only channel that I know of that specifically focuses in on Washington State wines and spirits, but not exclusively. But today we are talking about a Washington State distillery, one I've mentioned before. It is Woodenville Whiskey Straight Bourbon. And what's special about this particular bottle is it is a barrel pick from a group that I belong to called the Washington Bourbon Hunters. And this is their very first barrel pick. So after the review, we're going to go ahead and discuss what a barrel pick is briefly and whether or not it is for you to be involved in. That being said, this is a cast strength bottle as well. So this is not the typical bottle you can find at the store. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get into this. Woodenville whiskey, uh, this particular bottle, again, is a straight bourbon whiskey, which means it's a minimum, a, aged a minimum of four, four years. Um, but I do know that uh, a lot of their barrels are over five years old now. Now, uh, the owners, uh, Brett Carlisle and Orland Sorensen, they started Woodenville whiskey in 2010. Now, I met them in 2010. The company that I work for is a trucking company. And that they were on my route, and I was delivering brand new equipment to these guys where I got to know them early on. And I've been a fan, I hate to say the word, fanboy of this distillery ever since. Um, anyway, so these guys were best friends. Uh, they, in 2010 and 2011, they brought in the late Dave Pickerel. He was a former uh, master distiller for Maker's Mark. He taught Brett Nolan exactly how to do this. Brett and Nolan have never sourced, as far as I know, any of their spirits that they that they were making. They were making vodka before, it was a little gin, I believe, while their bourbon and their rye aged. Now, I don't know what the particular mash bill is. I know that they do have it listed, um, but in my rush to get the video out today, I've neglected to remember what that was. And anyways, all the grain for this particular bourbon uh, it is grown at the Oldham Farm in Quincy, Washington. So everything is done, except for the barrel making, inside the state of Washington. Uh, the grain is grown out in Quincy, out in eastern Washington. It is then shipped to the distillery in Woodenville, where it is ground up, mashed, distilled, and then it is barreled and shipped back out to the Oldham Farm, where they have the rickhouses, where the extreme temperatures of eastern Washington the extreme heats in the summer and the cold in the winter help turn Woodenville whiskey into what it is. So let's talk about this particular bottle. This particular bottle uh, is from barrel number 1436. I want to this is well, this is bottle number 128. I believe there was slightly over 155 bottles from this particular barrel. Uh, the proof on this is at 61.72% or at 123.44 alcohol by volume. So let's go ahead and get on the review of this. Just by looking at it as I roll it through the glass, this is a very viscous and oily looking bourbon. It is a deep, deep copper color, almost has a red tint to it. The legs on it are slow. As a, uh, as a cling to the side of the glass. Let's go ahead and take a nose. Ah, right off the bat, I'm getting cherry, cherry blossom, an intense caramel and intense molasses note. Now, a lot of this is directly from uh, the barrel strength, the intensity of this. I've had the 90 proof, which is what they're generally offering at the stores, but this is much more intense. There's a little bit of book leather on the nose as well. Now, one thing that for such a high proof bourbon, 
Um, there's very little, almost very little to no alcohol burn whatsoever on the nose. Um, and considering it's over 120 uh, ABV, at like I said, 123.44, that's amazing in itself. Little bit of vanilla as well from the from the barrels. Let's go ahead and take a sip, shall we? Mm. Right off the bat, the intensity remains with the flavors. It's like I said before, looking at it, I thought it was oily and viscous. It really is. As it sits on the palate, very oily, very viscous. It's got a very good, I uh, hate to use the phrase mouthfeel, but really that's exactly what it is. Um, the caramel is, in, is, is still intense, and it slowly turns into kind of a thick molasses. Uh, think, uh, oh, there used to be a, a, a Thanksgiving pie my mom used to make called shoe fly pie. And it's got a lot of molasses in it. That I'm getting a lot of bready molasses notes on this. The cherry is still present. Um, not so much the cherry blossom. And the book leather that I got a little on the nose has kind of turned into a nutty, a little bit of a nutty flavor to it. It's not bad. Um, something I'd expect more out of a out of a Jim Beam product. Um, like a Knob Creek uh, at a hundred, and I'm talking when I talk Knob Creek, I, there's really only one Knob Creek I buy, and that's the Knob Creek single barrel at 120 proof. So uh, similar to the is similar to the Knob Creek in that aspect. So the finish on this is extremely long, and very few of the flavors drop off suddenly. I the the vanilla kind of goes away first, but that cherry just lingers. The molasses lingers. Um, the other thing that I find shocking about this particular pick is that for a cash strength, there's no Kentucky Hug. Kentucky Hug, for those that don't know, when you sip a bourbon or a rye whiskey or even a scotch, you can get that burning sensation that kind of goes down this way. And you just don't get it. This is a very well-rounded, I don't like to use the word smooth, but very well-rounded pleasant drinking experience. Now, because it's cast strength, I am going to go ahead and add just a little bit of water. I do want to see what a little bit of water is going to do with this. I do suspect that if you do like a bourbon with an ice cube, the cast strength version of this, you could probably get directly from the distillery probably would hold up very well to an ice cube. Let me go ahead. Oh yeah. You can see how it's changed the, the viscosity on the, on the legs a little bit. Now I've probably taken it down to anywhere between 105 and 110 proof. That cherry seems a little bit more muted, but the caramel and the molasses are still there. And that book leather, the book leather is no longer there on the nose. But that peanut nuttiness has come through. Mm, the water dish has changed it significantly. Let's go ahead and take a sip. Mm. There's that cherry. The water has cut back a little bit on the finish. It shortened it just a little bit, but that bready molasses shoe fly pie note is still there. It lingers, but the flavors have separated a little bit on the finish. I, I will say that it, it has it has it has changed it just a little bit. Now, what's lingering a little bit is more of the uh, more of the molasses. It's staying on the tongue. So where everything else has kind of dropped off a little bit, the molasses has stayed. I've got to say, for a first pick for the Bur Washington Bourbon Hunters, guys, Jesse, who put it together at the group, you knocked it out of the park. Um, 
this is easily a score of a 91 uh, out of 100. Now, I have several of the barrels of barrel picks um, that I wasn't involved in with a group. Uh, one of them is from a local store that did a barrel pick. Uh, I also, Woodenville is one of the few places that you can go up to. They'll have special events. And you or you as an individual can go ahead and um, taste out of three barrels and then bottle your own uh, bourbon or rye, which I've done a couple times. Um, matter of fact, I've done it and been up early, early in the morning. Um, went to a special release, actually. And I was number 19 in line because there was several people there that had been there for 24 hours uh, waiting in line for a barrel, for excuse me, for a 100 proof rye whiskey that was finished with an apple wood stave. So let's talk about private groups and barrel picks. Um, with Woodenville, okay, like I said, the, the first time I ever did a barrel pick with these guys is they had a special event. You had to pay to get in um, to, to basically secure your spot. You go in at a special specific time you wait in line you go in and you taste either a bourbon or a rye out of three different barrels now this is three different barrels that, that they've chosen for this particular event and whatever's not sold afterwards they blend it in and bottle it uh, as is what a private group does and what stores will do like total wine or hagen or if you you are in uh, kentucky uh, the party source, and some of your other larger, whisk, uh, larger liquor stores will do, is they will go ahead and contact a distillery like Woodenville and say, hey, I want to go ahead and buy a barrel of whiskey, bourbon, rye, and I want to go ahead and not only have your name on it, but I want to have my name on it as a, um, for basically advertisement purposes. This is what I've chosen for my, to represent my store with your product. And what the Washington Bourbon Hunters did is we're, we're a loose-knit group uh, on Facebook, and we're all pretty much Woodenville fans. And so we wanted to go ahead. We all got together. We raffled off who was going to go do the, bourbon, uh, do the tasting. I, unfortunately, was not chosen, but that's okay because I am the recipient of two good bottles. Um, anyway, so what they'll do is because this is a special event, the owners of the distillery, in this particular case, Brett Nolan, and I don't know how many barrels they tasted. Usually it's between three and five. Some of you other larger distilleries will have as many as 10 barrels. And because it's a, a private pick, the distillers will pull out what they think are the best representations of their bourbon, of their rye. And so that they will set them out, they'll take the bunghole out of the barrel, and they will take the whiskey thief, put it right in, and literally right from the barrel, the group is tasting the, the whiskeys. I highly recommend that if you get involved in a whiskey group and you are able to do a barrel pick, please go ahead and get involved. It is exciting. It's, you know, you get a to experience something. Um, when my wife and I went back to Kentucky, uh, we took a tour of the Jim Beam factory. This is kind of where I fell in love with uh, Knob Creek 120. Is My wife and I were able to go ahead and taste various Jim Beam products. And then we were able to bottle our own uh, Knob Creek 120. We actually got three bottles. Uh, one of which will be opened up on my son's 21st birthday as his introductory bourbon. I also have an old bon open uh, distiller's edition scotch that was distilled the year he was born. But that's neither here nor there. Anyways, you get a chance to go ahead and, in that particular case, bottle it, and then with the hot wax, we put our thumbprints in the hot wax. This particular case, didn't get a chance to do that, but again, it's a private, private barrel pick, and I highly suggest you get a chance to do it. So, anyways, have you had a private barrel pick from Woodenville Whiskey? Have you had their straight bourbon? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you enjoy Woodenville Whiskey? Do you enjoy straight bourbon? Do you have any other barrel picks that you've had that you think would be good representation of that particular distiller. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And when you subscribe, go ahead and hit the bell icon. What's going to happen is when I upload a new video, you guys are going to be notified. The other thing is, is go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. If you like this video, 
let me go ahead and let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. That's going to help the channel and I'll be able to spread the message of more wines, more whiskeys. So anyways, as always, please go ahead and drink responsibly. And remember, life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. This is an excellent straight bourbon from Woodenville Whiskey. Cheers. Yeah, I don't like the word smooth. Well-rounded is a little bit nicer. Thanks.